took place, how the Haitian refugees were exploited by corrupt APNU supported cabals here who are smuggling the Haitians to Guyana for large sums of money. Y'all only looking at what he said about social media influencers, but he is speaking to all Guyanese that think they're going to come and comment shit on the internet. This is the first and this is the last time I'm addressing critics, Dharmalal, Robin Singh, Don Singh. I'm not doing it anymore. It makes no sense. I'm not addressing them anymore. I'm not addressing unless unless they have solid evidence like I usually come on Facebook and bring. Rick Ford Burke and all of the, I don't know, I, I'm mentioning him in a few weeks, he must be getting bored. The criminal Burke hiding away. I, um, I went to several schools as, you know, when once your, your parents is transferred, you transfer. So I went to um, uh, Strothville Secondary School, um, Swami, which is Coben John um, Secondary School, actually, Bar Jack, they taught me in school. And uh, <laughs> I guess that's where this rivalry began. For the last couple of weeks, they have been literally, like, you know, trolling me in an attempt to, I guess, stop me from talking, keep me quiet, or whatever it is. Whatever their intention, I don't know. I don't plan on staying quiet. I don't plan on keeping quiet. I don't plan on stop posting on my social media page. The 40 something thousand people came through the country. They just came here and went through. They were each paying thousands of US dollars to come through here. They were brought from gangs in Haiti along with gangs here. And you see that little smirk on his face. Let me tell you something. I thought Guyana was a democracy because they say uh, Apne was turning it into a dictatorship. Then why our leaders are acting like dictators right now? Let me tell her, your mother scorned something, right? In some cases, when that dried up a little bit, they started bringing from Suriname. They'll bring them, keep them overnight at some hotels. We have the name of the hotels here. And then put them in the buses and take them away. We've had Haitian refugees, refugees who whose documents were taken away by the traffickers. Taken away by the traffickers. Being on the ground and confronting Jack Deal and the vicious PPP and drug lords and money launderers, and in five years of solitary confinement and several charges, whether treason, whether sedition, and all those things didn't scare me while I was there in Guyana. <laughs> Why would Jack Deal think that uttering those uh, nonsensical statements could, could make me tremble on social media? It wouldn't work. Well, oh, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. Um, so the, the thing is that, in fact, I'd be happy if that happened, if it actually happened. I'd be pleased with that because we want to make sure, in fact, this human rights organization, we'd love them to come and look at what took place, how the Haitian refugees were exploited by corrupt APNU-supported cabals here who were smuggling the Haitians to Guyana for large sums of money that had direct involvement of APNU officials who are, the way it operated, 40 something thousand people came through the country. They just came here and went through. They were each paying thousands of US dollars to come through here. They were brought from gangs in Haiti along with gangs here. They would arrange for people to come. The government allowed them to meet the refugees, well, not the refugees, these were migrants coming through here, met them on the air side at the airport. They didn't come to immigration normally as people who come to visit Ghana. They call them visitors. They would, if you come to visit, you fill up your form, you come through, you get stamped in, etc. They were met in groups on the other side, taking place in buses. And, and the buses left straight for the border with Brazil. The buses went straight to the border with Brazil or kept straight in. In some cases, when that dried up a little bit, they started bringing from Suriname. They'll bring them, keep them overnight at some hotels. We have the name of the hotels here. And then 
put them in the buses and take them away. We've had Haitian refugees, refugees who, whose documents were taken away by the traffickers, taken away by the traffickers and held there. We found children there who didn't, were not traveling with their parents or anybody who they, they knew. APNU should be prosecuted and some of them for smuggling, a state-sponsored smuggling of Haitians in this country. So I'm happy if, if it goes there. I'm very, very happy if it goes there. Now, and they tried this, the same group tried this with the Bangladeshis when we came in, and we shut it down too. We shut it down. We're not gonna, we're not gonna tolerate people smuggling through our country. These were not Haitians who were coming to visit Guyana. They were just being trafficked through our country. These are not Haitians who are coming. A Haitian can come today and come on the immigration and come and visit Guyana on their own. They can come and visit Guyana. There's no prohibition. But they, they, um, this is it. And they talk about the automatic visa. Almost three quarters of CARICOM don't allow Haitian, Haitian um, citizens the same level of access the free travel that they allow to other other um, CARICOM nationals are they racist too so this is this is the thing i i hope we can do a document and then have the names of certain individuals sent up to the body to show that they are smuggling haitian nationals to guyana i i, I love that that is happening um, that's one. But as I said before, this is part of a plan. They, you remember they didn't get any resonance here. So they're hustling abroad. The US route seems to be cut off because Mr. Jeffries now is busy and other things. And I think he understands now the lies that they are being told. And a lot of the people in the US administration, etc., have seen through these criminals, the Burks and the others. And so they're trying here again. They represent afro guyanese They're seen through by the international community. Rickford Burke and all of the, I don't know, I, I mentioned him in a few weeks, he must be getting bored. The criminal Burke hiding away. I saw he's suing guilty share for 500 million. He could sue for 10 billion. We want him here. He should come to Guyana and sue. He should come, come and sue people here, I hope. So he wants to sue Gail Tishira sitting abroad, but he doesn't want to come to Guyana to answer for his extortion charges where he is trying to extort a businessman, criminal extortion. He doesn't want to come and face the music here. But the criminal bark and his ill, they've overplayed their hands. And now people in the US government, the State Department, everywhere, they understand what is that, that this is a business for people like Burke. He makes money personally from this sort of thing, using afro Guyanese causes to raise money for himself, and he, he converts into use. Uh, uh, this guy hasn't worked for 15 years, from what I gather. For 15 years, he doesn't work. He lives in the US. So clearly, he has to be conning people to live. And we've had this case of him conning. There are probably many more that we don't know of. But they've overplayed their hands. And people are now coming to find out. And what they're also doing, they're disparaging some of the African leaders who, and others who are giving this award to President Ali. They, what they are saying is that the only reason they're giving this award is because the people want to get favorable treatment in Guyana, concessions and stuff, for business side. Basically accusing them of being corrupt. This is the extremism of all of these groups. Of course, they have little resonance internationally and less resonance here. You, Ipadiji got nearly $500 million 
of taxpayers' money. As anyone in the villages, Afro-Guyanese villages of the country, whether they have ever seen them, the leadership, or know them. They're holding, spending this money, holding conferences at the Marriott and other places, but they'll never go one day to the villages to, to assist. I'm proud to say that this government been going everywhere, to every village in this country to, to assist all of our people. I really hope that means all Guyanese all over the world and those in Guyana as well because it's important that we have one of the smartest minds one of the most clever sons of the soil be on our side be on the sides of Guyanese when it comes down to anything that has to do with running the country right now we want Jack Dio up on our side because if Jack Dio is on our side then we know things are going to be all right because things have been always all right with Jack Dio ever since he stepped into power in the government. Don't look at it with no bias. You want the president and the vice president of your country to be on your side. Be honest. I would. I do. Right? So... Let's look around at this whole situation right now, right? What's going on with this? Is it real? Could we really take that 100% on what's being said? I think if Jack Dio had all of that information about what's really going on with the trafficking of the Haitians, I don't think the opposition leader or any person wouldn't be in a situation right now if it had anything to do with them allegedly right if anyone of the so-called opposition or the coalition right was inside of any part of a scandal that had to do with something as big as human trafficking right now in 2023 2024 and i ain't defending nobody but let me really rationalize it from a real place you really think that they would still be free at large without the information being published and nobody know and so many people was trafficked i know but it could be true and if it is true if it is really true then they are worse and they are doing worse things than they claim the so-called government is doing right now so if you are really doing that look is even more of a reason for persons to stay focused. It's even more of a reason for us to make sure we always watch yourself and watch we hundred. Because at any time you could be being deceived. Because if the opposition is as terrible as the so-called government, then what are we dealing with? Because think about it, both of them are two wings on the same bird. They both are parts of the political power of any country right and we know that this whole situation with jack Dio and burke it gone way back you know more than 20 years back some of these beef go more than 20 years back i like this beef that burke get with jack Dio and the beef that bench cup got with jack Dio is years and years and years this going on because remember I think Bench Cup even used to be a part of the PPP at one time. For those who, you know, might got a little bit of age to their name, you might remember when Mark Bench Cup used to be a part of the PPP at one particular time. But right now, he is no longer part of that party, and him and the leader of that party are, are going at it. You figure it out. But right now, we're going to get into some of the conversation that Mark has to share when it comes down to his sentiments about Barrett. Because I know that y'all remember too that Jack Dio, the vice president right now, had locked you up, you know, for a good couple of years. And the case just keep coming in, going out, coming in, going out, in, out, in, out, in, really finding no way to get out the real prison. He just coming to, come to court. And then you're back in jail, coming to court back in jail to frustrate you or to probably send you in a place that, you know, his mental shouldn't go. And 
he right now has this to say about Jack Dio as this video continue. You see what I'm saying? And I think right now one of his biggest female nemesis has got to be Randa Bob. And Randa got some words for you too. Randa got some choice words for you too. You see what I'm saying? We can get right into their conversation. We can let them tell you how they feel about it. And let's have a conversation in the comment section. What are your perspectives on what they had to say and what Jack Dio had to say as well earlier in the video? Do you believe that what he said about the opposition is true? Let's have a conversation about that in the comment section. About this, do you think any social media person should allow this frivolous statement to intimidate or stop them from doing the work that they're doing? I don't think, um, I know quite a few of them. In fact, they have upped the notch 10 times, 10 fold. They have no regards to Barra Jagdeer. Barra Jagdeer doesn't do anything to scare anybody, whether in Guyana or outside of Guyana. And he cannot, he cannot for one moment pretend as though he's going to scare me or others. It's just not working. People are, are back doing their own thing. In fact, it's even, it's even worse. And what Barra Jagdeer has done, what she, what, sorry, what he has done was open a can of worms, a big can of worms. He's going to create lots of other social media influencers and so forth. It's, it's not going to work. And somebody should tell that to Jack Dale. They should go really close to his ear. Be careful though. And whisper just that to Jack Dale, that it's a waste of time. It's not working. He hasn't deterred me. I'm still here. And I frankly say to hell with Jack Dale. Nobody concerns with what he says. They know it's a bluff. They know he's a dictator. They know he's corrupt. They know, let him tell Sue that. Let him tell those money launderers that in Guyana. Let him tell those drug lords that. Let him tell, <laughs> let him tell those people that. Let him not dictate to people like us. Look, we're not losing sleep over that. You know, I, I'm glad that whatever was said would not affect the way you deliver or continue to deliver um, news and information to the people of Ghana. Also, for those I other... Just, I just um, have one, one a rhetorical question. Being on the ground and confronting Jack Dio and the vicious PPP and drug lords and money launderers. And if five years of solitary confinement and several charges, whether treason, whether sedition and all those things didn't scare me while I was there in Guyana. <laughs> Why would Jack Dio think that uttering those uh, nonsensical statements could could make me tremble on social media. It wouldn't work. I just thought I mentioned that. I don't think it's just you, Mark, because I know other people... No, I'm not saying it's just me. It's, it's a bunch of us. Other people were concerned, so that's why I felt the need to just enlighten people so people would know that it's nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to be concerned about. Um, you should continue to do the work that you're doing, continue to enlighten people, and let people know that, look, look, this is just a way to scare people, to put them off, to throw them off course. And, you know, the whole thing of putting the service on um, Rickford Burke, showing it, showing a stupid video with a process server. This is the way, just so you guys know that this is the way we serve um, civil process in America. We do not serve criminal process that way. So a uh, process server we use when we want to file a complaint, a summons and a complaint against a person, that's the method we use. But if it's a criminal matter, the sheriff or the police ultimately um, institute service on that individual. We will never have a process server serve a criminal matter on anyone. And that's not a good way to even get jurisdiction, as I said, Jurisdiction can only uh, be exercised over a person if they commit a, an offense within the borders of that country. And this is why we've uh, discussed several times the issue of extradition. You have to extradite the person to the jurisdiction to stand trial. So most times somebody commits a crime and then they flee the jurisdiction and then the country has to request because of some treaty between the two countries request that the person be sent back to that country to be tried and convicted of that offense. Otherwise, there's no possible way, and I tell you this with no conviction, there's absolutely no possible way for anyone to get jurisdiction over you when it comes to any criminal activity that they're intending to charge you. I mean, they could initiate crim um, private criminal charges, but how much weight would that be? And even in private criminal charges, 
the same issue of jurisdiction must first be overcome in order for them to even get their hands properly on you. So you, it comes back to the same position. And all those uh, social media influencers like Mark and whoever else is out there um, trying to enlighten the folks in Ghana, I would say just to continue without any, uh, without any conviction and just don't even worry about it. I see somebody asking, do it need to, does it need to a judge to approve for a criminal matter? No, I mean, Mark and I, you know how a criminal matter starts. It starts first with an investigation at the police level, and then the police review the file, and if they think that they should lay charges, they go ahead, or if they think it's but, too hard to them, you know, they Washington, send it over to the DPP. In a, in a real democracy, it happens here in the US, but those sort of things are called white country, like Guyana, People don't get the kind of justice and no proper investigations or nothing at all. But so you have to run a fucking hide. The beloved Bio Jack, you did a press conference today where he basically said to all fucking Guyanese, including the ones living in America, that if y'all motherfuckers comment anything that he and the government don't agree with, they're going to charge you fuckers. Or maybe y'all missed that part. Y'all only looking at what he said about social media influencers, but he is speaking to all Guyanese that think they're going to come and comment shit on the internet about his government and if he don't agree with it he's going to charge your motherfuckers okay and people can actually sue you off even speaking out about them that, that, that and, and you see that little smirk on his face let me tell you something i thought guyana was a democracy because they say uh apne was turning it into a dictatorship then why our leaders are acting like dictators right now let me tell her your mother scorn something right now you will not bully me into fucking silence i will continue to fucking speak for the poor people in my country okay so the entire ppp party can fuck right off fuck off fuck off okay i said so you're trying to bully an entire nation where they cannot speak out about the fucking wrongdoings that your government is doing. Eh? They have treatment of Guyanese every day in that country. Tell people fucking sue people. People ain't even got money for fucking eating, you know. Eh? You're telling them about sue. Most of the complaints that come in, we in boxes from Guyanese living in fucking Guyana that are suffering on a daily basis in Guyana for fucking eat. And you worried about what people saying about your government that eating fucking lobster and steak every night? Really? Huh? Let me tell you something right now. We're no longer living in a democracy. That's a fucking dictatorship. And they could bring how much fucking salmons they want to the fucking Americas. Bring it, mother scum. Shy we with it. We don't even care. We can get liar money. We can lie the fuck up and we can come. And we can fight whatever we got to fight in Guyana. But you are not going to fucking silence none of us. None of us. You should be a fucking shame with that smirk on your face. What do you think? You're making Guyanese feel good or proud of you? Eh? You're trying to silence the Guyanese people. Who's, who's bright fucking idea was that? Anyways, bring it the motherfucker on, okay? Because I'm going to continue. Well, that was a very fiery expression of how Randa feel right now about Jack Hill. And in this video coming up, you can hear we're going on with Melly Mel because it seems like it's a whole team has orchestrated around making sure that her experience on and off social media is like hell on earth. And we're going to get into some insights from Burke, we can get some history about him and Jack Dio way back when he was a boy. Man, let let them tell you directly from day out, and we can have a conversation about this and everything else that was talked about in the video in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. And um, so my mother has uh, my mother's father is from Craig on the West Bank. He's uh, Ivan Remington. A politician he actually used to be a ppp member of parliament and then he switched over um to the pnc and became a, a minister in the burnham administration and he had a funny experience i'll come back to that um my dad's family's from my Coney, um quarantine area and so my dad was a police officer and he went up he was stationed at Bardica, met my mother 
and, and Twala, uh, made for kids. And here, here, I, here I, I am. And so I basically grew up on police uh, properties all over Guyana. My dad, wherever my dad went, we, um, we lived on the East Coast, um, West Coast, Arctica. Um, so, I, so I lived on, in, in, in the police compound until I left Guyana. Tell us which police compound, if you don't mind. Uh, Lenora, actually, Lenora Police Compound. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's funny that I see the police talking a lot about me, but they never said that I lived, I was a child of a policeman yeah. and I lived in the police compound yeah. until I left Guyana. Yeah. Um, I went to several schools as, you know, when once your, your parents is transferred, you transfer. So I went to um, uh, Strothville Secondary School, um, Swami. Which is Coven John um, Secondary School, actually, Bar Jack. They taught me in school. And uh, <laughs> I guess that's where this rivalry began. Um, and for a brief while, I went to St. Rosa. So I, um, so I left, and I left Guyana in 1992. Before I left Guyana, I left high school at 16. I became a teacher at Iflut. Um, I actually taught at Iflut University, Did sorry. Iflut, Iflut uh, <laughs> Government School. Um, uh, there was an education officer in Region 3 by the name of Ethel Drida, who's called a Tiny Archer. Mm -hmm. And you should know her. I know her. So well. she's like, you should be a teacher. Yeah. And so she demanded that I be a, 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 pupil, a pupil teacher. And I taught some students who were older than me. Um, and from there, I, I went um, to do a short stint at the Ministry of Regional Development. Uh, the, the ministers at the time were um, Armia Johnson and Jeffrey Thomas. Then I, um, I was also assigned to an organ, an, a constitutional body called the NCLDO, National Congress of Local Democratic Organs. It's in the Constitution. It's supposed to be one step of government below Parliament. It doesn't really function now. And after that, I became a technical assistant at age 17, 18 to Faith Harding. Dr. Faith Harding, who was one of the most, I just paid a tribute to her on Facebook, one of the most brilliant, beautiful, professional, saucy, savvy women in Guyanese politics. And... Um, my experience with Dr. Faith Harding was actually historic. Um, Dr. Harding was the Minister of the Public Service, and the uh, Mission Chapel, Congregational Church, the church that was started by slaves in New Amsterdam. And they were celebrating, I think, either a hundred, um, their centennial anniversary, or a significant anniversary. And Mrs. Hoyt, um, Desmond Hoyt was the president at the time, and Mrs. Hoyt, um, was invited to deliver the keynote address. And they asked me to write the speech. Faith asked me to write the speech. And I wrote the speech. And um, uh, the president read the speech. And after she delivered it, he asked for me. And he told me, young man, you will come and work for me. And I had a rough time at first. I thought he didn't like me, but he was training me. And so I became the special assistant, I think the youngest special assistant to the president of Guyana. And um, I came, I left in 1992 after we lost the elections. Um, wonderful experience in public service. And um, we lost elections in October 5th, 1992. I left on October 24th to come to study. And um, he asked me, after my first semester to come back, Desmond Hoyt, and set up his office as opposition leader. And so I was his chief of staff. I was even working for him while I was in New York going to school. Wow. So, as we always say, that's the backstory, right? That's the because backstory. Because you're going to get to why you're so passionate. Some people might say, that's not true. I, my, I grew up as a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always said those are their opinion, and you have your own biography that you wrote. The, the PPP has basically up. Um, for the last couple of weeks, I noticed that they have basically upped their trolling game on social media. So I have been trending on, well, I haven't really been trending because not like anybody followed the page. Like they post, they make a post about me with five comments, two shares, and about 60 or 50 likes or something. So I can't say I've really been trending, but I guess I've been trending in the PP groups and the PP on the PP propaganda page. So not really trending because nobody pays attention to that shit. But for the last couple of days. Oh, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks.
for the last couple of weeks, they have been literally, like, you know, trolling me in an attempt to, I guess, stop me from talking, keep me quiet, or whatever it is, whatever their intention, I don't know. I don't plan on staying quiet. I don't plan on keeping quiet. I don't plan on stop posting on my social media page. So, um, a few, I, I, did, I didn't really want to address it much because I didn't want to bring much attention to it. But for those of you that follow me and for those of you that, my friends and my family, for those of you that follow me, just know that we are heading in, this is 2024, we're heading into election in 2025. And these people are going to be literally coming after any and everybody that is associated with me, any and everybody that follows me. Like, so they're basically, they're, 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 they're at the stage right now where they're basically attacking, slandering, bullying, innocent people that has nothing to do with my platform, my page, what I put out there, what I post, because my friends, my personal friends can tell you, when I make a post on social media, there's, there aren't any, as long as I know what I'm posting, I have the facts and evidence to back up what I post, there's nobody that can come and tell me, oh, to remove the post or take down the post or do this, but my friends don't do that. My social media page and what I do, that's it. The friendship is completely separate and different from what I post on my social media page. What I say, what I, act, what, um, what I advocate against, it's completely, totally different from my friendships and things. But I know um, of recent, a friend of mine was caught, was caught in the crossfire. So they basically come online, live in Guyana page that is funded by the PPP that runs out of the prime minister office. Um, they came online, just took an innocent person picture, posted slander them, bully them, about them being involved in extortion with me. Ask them, ask them to show me. The, and all they, they keep posting and say, oh, the evidence is coming. We're bringing the evidence. The evidence is coming of Meli Mel extorting people. The evidence is coming. The evidence is coming. Nigel Darmalal just made a post how I, I took 86. So far, I've collected $86 million from businesses. What businesses? Where is the evidence that I've collected 86 from businesses? But this is, and let me just say this. This is the first and this is the last time I'm addressing critics, Dharmalal, Robin Singh, Don Singh. I'm not doing it anymore. It makes no sense. I'm not addressing them anymore. I'm not addressing, unless, unless they have solid evidence, like I usually come on Facebook and bring. When I, when I come to accuse somebody, I bring all my receipts. Unless they have solid evidence, then I'm not addressing them. I'm not paying them any mind. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's basically a distraction to me. It's a dist they're basically trying to distract me from what I'm actually doing, what I'm actually trying to do, what I'm actually trying to let the Guyanese people know, what I'm actually trying to let the citizens of Guyana know what's happening in government and what's going on. Y'all really want to put me out of business? If, if the PUP really want to put me out of business and make Melly Mel irrelevant, simple. Do the right thing. Treat, this, treat, treat the people of Guyana right. Do what you're supposed to do. And I'll become irrelevant. But I am only relevant because y'all continue to push the... Um, continue to... to, to be involved in corruption in all the institutions. You are continue to you are continue to victimize and to victimize the citizens of Guyana. You are continue to there's so many injustice. Um, I'm gonna go over to the to the um, to the promotion list from the Guyana Police Force in a, in, in a minute. That's one of the, that's one of the stories that I'm gonna be covering today. The promotion list, and I'm gonna show you exactly what is happening and level of corruption that is happening in Guyana. It's like you can't even. It's like I can't even begin to explain, to give you all in depth as to what is happening because sometimes I don't want to say everything, I don't want to post everything unless I have like concrete evidence to say, well, yes, this is happening, this is what is happening, then I don't want to speak on it and I don't want to say it. But the level of corruption is appalling. I cannot begin to tell you all what is happening in those in every single institution, every single institution, none is exempt. Verb. Well crafted sea moss gummies, nutritious, delicious superfoods. What's your favorite flavor? <laughs> 